Right, Range Rover Classic. As you know, we've got our project Range Rover Classic we've bought in France and we've bought the VM engine home. So this is the VM engine. So it's a good engine, but they do have problems with the cylinder heads. And the problem we found with the cylinder head is this cracking between the two here, between the inlet and exhaust port. So we have looked at different options. So we have found, and we bought a load of these, we have found this lovely lush looking cylinder head from the 2.5 litre engine. Now ours is the 2.4. So I was wondering, could I put the 2.5 cylinder head on the 2.4 engine? So we'll have a look in this video at the differences between the cylinder heads and the injectors and what you have to do to convert to this later, more robust cylinder head. And we'll also, at the end of the video, we will strip down a cylinder head, take the valves off and just have a look. Now, it's actually really clever. I do like these VM engines. The individual cylinder heads makes it really easy to just take off the cylinder heads. You haven't got to cut a big bit of head around. So, um, right. So if we look, first of all, let's just look at each face in turn. If you go that way, Kate. So if you look onto this face here, so the inlet and exhaust manifold port is exactly the same. We've got a stud missing on this one, but they're all exactly the same. And if I flip them up, they, they're not dissimilar. Um, here, you know, all the holes line up, the valves are the same. Everything here lines up. So we're all looking good. We've got the same indentations and everything. Right, now if we look at the, this is where things get interesting. So bear in mind, this one here is the 2.4. Now, let me grab my injector. So one difference is the injector. So I've got an injector here to show you. So you will note that on the 2.4, the injector is held in place and it just slides in and it's held in place by this fork, okay? And it goes in the top here. But on the later 2.5 one, what you've got is it actually screws in. So the injector screws in. So you're gonna have to change your injectors. If you wanna to upgrade to the later head, you're gonna to have to fit the later injector. But the connector at the end of the injector is, is the same. You need different overflow pipes, but the actual connector is the same. So that's not too big a deal. So we might do that. And I'll put some part numbers up on the screen now for the 2.5 injectors. Now these were used on the Jeep, Alfa Romeo, Rover 825, and each one had a different part number for their own one. So I'll put those up on the screen. Right, the other thing you'll notice is the heater plug. So the heater plug on the 2.4 is inserted down here and this one is inserted in the same place so there's no difference there either the heater plugs are transferable it's just the injectors you've got to change everything else as far as I can see if you look from the top okay they're all the same so we might have a look at putting 2.5 cylinder heads on our 2.4 engine now the compression ratio might be different but I can't see that the combustion volume is any different but this is where it gets really interesting so if you look here it looks like they put a different insert between the valve it looks like you can see this line either side it looks like they've realized it was a weakness on the cylinder head so that is quite interesting now one other interesting comment before we do the strip down is although this head is cracked if you look at the port the the valve seats there's no crack and that's because that's a hardened steel insert around both valves. So, and actually if you, let's put it in the light a bit more, Kate. <laughs> if you look down in the casting here, there's, it doesn't seem like the crack propagated down in the casting. So I actually reckon, because we bought this engine off Grant and he said it ran fine. He couldn't understand that the heads were cracked. But I think you could actually run with a cracked head. I don't think it matters, this crack. It's not ideal. But actually, I don't think it matters. Right, let's strip a head down. Right, so I'm going to show you how to strip down a cylinder head. We're going to take the valves out and how to inspect it. And we'll take the heater plugs out and bits and pieces, just for those of you who are interested in it. We'll give it a bit of a clean as well, shall we? Right, so first off, let's take the, the valves out. Now, I think these little things are called collets. Um, but I've looked on the website. In the US, guys, in the US, you call them keepers apparently so you've never seen this have you Kate? No. Right so we will 
you can get a valve spring compressor. So what we need to do is we need to compress the valve springs. Now, someone's going to tell me this. You shouldn't do it in a voice. And you can get a valve spring compressor. But this was working well for me yesterday. And then if I compress the valve spring, you can see the valve spring going down there. Look. All right, now these are these are little wedges. And then we need to poke these out. They're two little half wedges, look. You see on my screwdriver's magnetic. And they got little ribs around them. Oh, oh, it's got little ribs. And on the end of the valve, there's a little groove and they sit in it. So let me take the other one out. Yeah, stand back, Kate. Yeah. Let's get that other one out. He's stuck. Oh, I'm going to have to compress him a bit more. He's just... Let me see if I can just push him out. Well, he's gone somewhere. Close. But then what we can do is we can... We can release that. And then look, it all comes... <laughs> it's like a comedy, this, isn't it? So the, the valve... The valve spring comes off. And there's your valve. So we can have a look at the valve. Now what... Right, so let me just show you that. So that's the... The valve. What we're looking for is a clean face all the way around here. No cracks or burnt out bits. And it looks okay. So the valve looks fine. Okay, there you go. And there's the little groove at the end. And the spring pushes against this. This here. And then those little wedges lock in there. And they're tapered. And it all pushes and holds it. We'll do the second one and take a look. So there's one valve. That looks okay. Right, let's see if we can do this. So, All right, let's see if I can push those collets out a bit more. There you go. He's, there's, there he is again. The second one's always a bit tighter. I just need to... All right, if I let it go slowly. Okay, so there's that. Okay. Now, they haven't got any oil seals. Um, on a lot of cylinder heads, you have a little rubber oil seal over there to stop the oil going back down. But there you go, you can drop the valve out. And again, we're just checking he's got a good face. He's all looking good there. So the valves are fine on these. But let's have a look which... So has this got a cracked? So yeah, this one, this was cracked. You can see it's a much finer crack though there. But again, the, the valve seats are fine. There's no, we've got a nice clean surface around the valve seat. They're hardened valve seats inserted. I, I can show you that. Where's that magnet I had earlier? Oh. So the cylinder head is aluminium and you can see it's non-magnetic. This is all non-magnetic. But these valve seat inserts are actually hardened steel that's inserted so you can see all that edge and I think that's why these these are okay because the, the hardened inserts form a seal and I don't think the cracks are as serious as they would be in a normal cylinder head yep. right then we'll take the glow plug out so this is for the diesel this is what heats up the diesel so you can start them on a cold morning <laughs> they're actually real tricky to get to when they're in the car these They're not expensive glow plugs. How long's the thread on there? I think it's. There you go. I think it. Come on. I think it's. It's it stuck. Jammed? It's jammed. I think it's. I might have to just sort of spin him out. Ah. There we go. So I think it's got furred up at the end there. So there we go. But we'll check that with a multimeter later and check. As long as it's got resistance. You can see the red insulating collar. So you put voltage on these to heat them up. They are through the body there. And this end bit glows red. There you go. That's the glow plug. And that's about it. I'll use the... What I'll do is I'll just remove the studs off this. I've got a, a stud extractor tool. So you put the stud through the hole. And as you turn this, it grips on it. I'll put that through. Now, I don't want to grip it on the thread. And then what it will do is it oh, 
start to grip the grip the bolt and then I can bring the bring the whole bolt out. Now apparently there are some cylinder heads that have a different location point. I'll show you. So there we go. Apparently some cylinder heads have two two of these one, two, we've only got one on this. But I haven't seen one of those, but apparently they exist. So we'll strip that all down. But that's how you check your cylinder head, check your valves are good, strip it all down, and then you can clean it and build it all back up again. So they go VM cylinder heads, sort of done. Right, one thing that I just noticed, this just fell out. Um, now, interestingly, it can't fall out. I thought, well, what would happen if that fell out in the cylinder? But it can't because it... The, the circle of the, the area where it goes, you'd be held in as it's bolted to the block. But that's there and the injector lives in there. But that's a steel insert, that is. It's got an interesting ring around the, must have a sort of, sort of compression ring. But I don't think generally they're meant to, to fall out. But there we go, that's fallen out. Um, right, good luck with that.